through the imposers, right? So um, uh, the wait, 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 well, so that's what we did first, the imposers, and we ended with Middle Chinese, yeah. And then we did the transposers, and I basically only did Shaishan series because I'm going to skip paronomastic glosses as I advertised very early on. Uh, and I'm also going to skip Tongja, even though I've just mentioned them, uh, because they turned out to be too hard for me to prepare in the time I had available. Yeah. So then we go straight to uh, Middle Chinese transposers, uh, which is Fangqie and the rhyme books. Oops. I need to click on it to get it to go forward. Okay, so what's in Fang Chi? So uh, traditionally, it's the invention of Fang Chi is credited to Mr. Sun Yang, uh, but uh, it looks like actually uh, uh, this Ying Shao and uh, Fu Chen uh, used it before he did. Uh, so that's just to tell you, uh, or the, the point I want to make is uh, Fanche is older than the Rhine books, but it only gets truly systematic when we get to the Rhine books. And here is a Fanche. So we have uh, our sort of head word character, and, and then we have two characters that spell it, and then we have this character, Fun, which is there to tell you that what you're looking at is a spelling of this character. Because if you just saw this, you would say, that's very hard to make sense of, right? <laughs> uh, so when you see three characters and then fun, you know, oh, I'm looking at a fun chase spelling of the first character. And uh, then you say, well, why do we call it fun che? Well, you can also put che here, and it doesn't matter. You can either put fun or you can put che. So, uh, here I give you a romanization of it. So tung is equal to tok plus hung. Okay? And uh, I like to, you know, take this example from English. Phone is equal to fake plus loan. Uh, and I'm doing that, you know, because if I said, you know, phone is equal to, uh, no, if I was, if I said like, I don't know, uh, uh, bone is equal to bake plus long, you would say, yeah, I can see there's a B on both sides, yeah. Uh, but, but in this case, it's like, oh, you are getting some information. The information you're getting is a PH in English makes the X sound, okay? Okay, so, uh, so that was it for Fan Chen introducing to the main principle. It's a way of spelling Chinese characters by giving their initials and giving their rhymes. Now we change, turn to the rhyme books. Okay, so the first Rhyme book we still have, although we don't have it. So let me <laughs> um, try and make that more precise. The first rhyme book that we have a later version of that's complete uh, is uh, the Chie Yun, which was written in uh, 601, and it's by Mr. Lu Fan Yan. And the story of it is very fun, uh, which is that his father was a great poet and a gentleman. And, and he had a bunch of poet gentlemen over for dinner and, and wine. And then they started talking about poetry and how to rhyme properly. And then they got into a, an argument about, oh, should you rhyme like this? Should you rhyme like that? And then he listened as a boy to this conversation. He thought, oh, these are great wise men. So then he wrote down uh, the, 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 the book to guide you to use correct rhyme, uh, you know, as this group of gentlemen uh, would have agreed. Now, of course, he wrote the book, you know, years and years later as an adult. So I think this is a, a nice example of Confucian filial piety, right? Like, don't, don't anything good I've done, you can tell my father at his dinner party. That's where it comes from. Um, but anyhow, the first complete uh, instance of this book that we have, a kind of uh, future edition is this uh, Kang Yu Bu Chu Chu Yen, uh, written in 706 by uh, Wang Ren Xu. And I gave that to you. So you'll remember that, like, I, I gave you a bunch of PDFs, and then, like, uh, I don't know, a month later, I gave you one more. Yeah. 
So that one more I gave you is the complete manuscript of this uh, rhyme. Book. Okay. Then uh, the Guanyun was published in uh, 1070, 1008 under imperial patronage, and it's the sort of the big rhyme book. Yeah. And uh, generally speaking, when people do Chinese historical phonology and they say the Chayun, they're actually talking about the Guanyin. And part of that is because the Guanyin has lots of characters in it. Okay, so uh, there's an excellent parallel edition of these various rhyme books because, because we have some fragments uh, between, we don't have, I don't think we have anything you know, from the 602 autograph, but we have some fragments from good one that come quite close. Uh, and there's little various bits involved. Uh, there's also, uh, well, I don't know, it's not working anything, but uh, all sorts of uh, rhyme book related resources are, uh, are available at this link. Uh, and uh, you have the slides, so you can click on them there. Yeah. Okay, so here is a uh, fragment from Dunhuang. So if you like, this is the the original chain, although it's slightly afterwards. Uh, and it, now you can see what, what a rhyme book looks like. Uh, so the first thing I will point out uh, is that it says ping. Uh, is this channel? No. Anyhow, uh, the volumes of the book are by tone. So the first piece of information you get is tone just by which volume of the book. There's four volumes. Uh, no, five volumes. Yeah. Uh, four for the four tones and one because King Chun was too big. So they had it in two volumes. Um, now, this is my transcription of that page. Uh, okay, yeah. so, so this is where it's saying there are 54 level tone rhymes. And then this is the kind of table of contents for the volume of the ping rhymes. Uh, and then you see it's just uh, it's just these fine shape for the different rhymes. So you remember this one, tone equals tone plus tone. Uh, yeah? Okay. So that's the opening page. Yeah. Wait, so the, um, the initial is given on the left and the uh, line is on the right. Then? Yeah, that's because I'm making it easy for you. Oh, okay. Right? If you look at it, actually, it's read this way. Right. And then you actually get the phone check here. So the number and then the, and then the head word. And then this is a homophone group from the Kanyuruchu Chayun, uh, which is to say these characters are all pronounced, the head words are all pronounced the same way. Yeah, that's the minimal unit of the of the rhyme book, it's a homophone group. So you have basically you have the volumes with the tongue, then you have if you like the chapters, uh, which are the, the rhyme category. Uh, and then you have the um, the homophone group. Okay, so let's and then and this is you know again let me read it this way. Okay, so here's a translation of it. So so this this this, this is the head word of the homophone group. So it means all of these characters are pronounced ye. Then it gives the fan share for that ye, and then it says. This is a note, you know, also pronounced ye, and there's the fun shape of ye uh, in the vulgar writing. A total of nine characters have pronunciation ye. Now, it is not saying that all nine have those two pronunciations. This is a comment that only pertains to the headword, right? So the headword both functions as the headword and as an entry. So that's just one thing to pay attention to. And then we get a quick uh, remark about the meaning. So this get is the name of a precious stone. This get means uh, to ride a horse. This get is like a crow, but with three heads 
and six tails. Uh, and this here is the ghost of a small child. And then you hit some notes, also pronounced get with the hypo, and then there's a function for that. Right? Okay, so this is just to give you the feel of one homophon group. Okay, so what is the phonetic information in the rhyme tables? There's the tone, which is by the volume. There's the rhyme category, which is the, the, the chapter, if you like. Uh, then there's a homophon group, and I've just shown you those. Yeah, that's the that's the information that's explicitly given in the rhyme. Table, yeah? But then there's also phonetic information implicit in the rhyme book. That's the rhyme category again. So the rhyme category is redundantly reported once explicitly and once implicitly. Uh, and that is by chains of conscious spellers, rhyme chains. I'll say something about that in a minute. And then uh, the onsets are only implicitly given, whereas they were explicit in the tables. They're only implicit in the books, right? And that is again by onset chain or by puncture chains. Uh, and then we have uh, divisions, which I'm not quite sure I'll get to, but this is the equivalent of the ranks of the rhyme tables. So let's look at puncture chains. Okay, I, I, I'm a little bit worried that there will be an awkward stopping point today. Sorry about that. If so, so we choose a character. Here's a character, and then we look it up, which means we we just find it. You know, we somehow somehow we find it in the in the um, in the book. Okay, here it is. Okay, then we look it up, and we get its fun chair reading, right? So we uh, look up its fun chair, and we find its fun chair. Yeah. So now we can do this. We can say, oh, this one has the same initial as this one and has the same rhyme as this one, right? Okay, now we can look up the Fanche reading for both of those. So we can look up the Fanche reading for the initial speller of the one we started with and the initial speller of the rhyme speller of the one we started with. And uh, we find this is the function reading for this character, and this is the function reading for this character, right? And then we can add that to our network. And uh, here is what we get. So you get the idea. Let me see if I, we can do it some more. And at some point, we get some bars to look at. Okay. Uh, so this is where I think I'm going to stop, right? <laughs> but if everyone, on board with, with what we're doing here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the 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 blue lines are initial chains, and the red lines are rhyme chains. Okay. Now let's just focus in because it's starting to become a mess. We focus in on one or the other. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so chains of Fanchi onset spellers that specify a series of characters that have the same onset, and chains of Fanchi rhyme spellers specify a chain of characters that share a rhyme. Yeah, so this is how this information is implicit in these sources, right? So, so far we have these onset chains. Just, you know, I'm just ignoring the, the, the red lines, and we have uh, in, in the evidence we've so far looked at, we have these uh, four onset chains. And then in the evidence we've so far looked at, we have these three uh, rhyme chains. And now I just, you know, maybe this is this is me overkill here, but it looks like why on earth did I put it in that weird position? <laughs> but it's because it's the same as this, right? Like uh, I, I just, Either we ignore the red ones to look at the blue ones, or we ignore the blue ones to look at the red ones in terms of the chains. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the links. Yeah. Okay. So now let's uh, expand an onset chain. Okay. So look at uh, our first initial chain, which was made up of these two characters. And, and we got into a little loop there, right? Okay. So now 
if, if I start with this or I start with this, I end up in, this, in an infinite loop and I won't get anywhere. But if I just start kind of God knows where, yeah, uh, some of those chains will lead back to these two. And that's what I've done here is I've just, you know, uh, in principle, gone through the whole book and, <laughs> and looked for what, like, like, so, so to give an example, this character has as its sponge onset speller this character, right? And this character has as its sponge onset speller this character. So I had to look through the whole book asking myself, okay, what characters have this one as their Fanche onset speller? And then I can expand my Fanche onset chain. Uh, all right. Now there are a total of 51 such onset chains in the chain. And an onset chain we call a shengle. Now, do we think Middle Chinese had 51 distinct onset consonants? Well, you'll remember that the, the Rhine tables only distinguish 36 initials. Now, maybe uh, middle, early Middle Chinese had 50, one initials and uh, maybe the, the you know, number radically reduced, or maybe it's a kind of artifice of this document as a sort of philological artifice that some uh, fund chains happen not to be linked. So how are we gonna figure this out? Okay. Um, yeah, this is just saying that the divisions I, I'm not going to talk about it right now. It's too complicated. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is right now, I'm just trying to introduce you to the Rhine books as a source in the same way that I think it was just yesterday, I introduced you to the Rhine tables as a source. Now to do some kind of middle Chinese reconstruction, if you want to call it that, sort of philological phonetic analysis of middle Chinese, we need to combine those two sources. But I'm not going to do that in this PDF, uh, and you really have to do that in order to get the divisions. So that's why I'm leaving them out here. And that's the end of this presentation. Okay, so that was just to uh, give you a feel for the Rhine books. Now the next presentation is combining the Rhine tables and the Rhine books. So you have 51 onset chains. Yeah. And how many characters are there in one chain? I mean, how many characters have they used to spell onsets? Well, very roughly. I mean, it's 100 or 200 words. Well, this is one whole chain. Like, this is. And representative. Yeah, and represents Yeah. So let's say uh, multiply by six, six by 51, and you, you have the right. Very yeah. Uh, and uh, and what I should say here is, of course, uh, let, actually, we can, I don't know. Um, there are 9,000 characters, basically, in the, in the uh, chain. So let me just uh, very schematically make this chain. OK. So uh, this is not sort of the whole chain, if you like. Uh, but I'm only giving you characters that are used as onset spellers. So there are hundreds of characters, yeah. hundreds and hundreds of characters, but they're like, and, and so on, from all of them, right? So basically, you, you know, they, these are, and, and this is, you know, um, makes sense, right? Like imagine you're writing a rhyme book and uh, and someone says, and, and you have the word late in front of you, right? And you want to say, okay, late is mm -mm plus cake, right? You're not going to say, you know, lemur, right? You're not going to say, oh, I'm going to define late with lemur. No, <laughs> because lemur is a weird word. Whereas you're very likely to, use late to define linear, right? So these are kind of uh, common words that are actually like used as spellers. Whereas all these characters, you know, at the edges, 
they're they're just entries in in the in the book, and then they use these ones as their run onset spellers. Does that make sense? That's that's how you you know because if you get if you if you multiply fifty one by six, you get what uh, let's say it was just fifty by five, then we get two hundred fifty, right? So that's kind of the the ballpark of uh, onsets, like onset speller characters. Yeah. But so the same characters are used to spell the line or that's different. Uh, they can be. It's not like uh, it would have been nice if uh, Mr. Liu very fastidiously said, I'm using these characters for onset spellers and these characters for rhyme spellers. It's not so. It's not so clean. So some characters are used for both, but it doesn't really matter, right? Because you can always just follow the chain. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, you know you can actually, like, if you wanted to, I could give you uh, a spreadsheet that just lists, you know, nine thousand characters and gives you the bunch of readings, and then you can actually load that into uh, a program. Or, uh, like, well, you choose your favorite draft theory program, Gephi. But Gephi is what I would recommend, yeah. And then you can actually just tell it to make these chains. And, and that's quite cool. Uh, much easier than doing it the old fashioned way, which is to actually look up uh, the, the characters in the way I've done here. The, the rainbows were composed to make new poems. Yeah. Because you ignore the precious pronunciation of this being lost. Uh, maybe a little bit of both because you're supposed to, to rhyme correctly, right? So if, yeah. if, you, if you're supposed to rhyme correctly, it means that the old rhymes are in danger of being lost. Yeah? And um, the, in the imperial examination system, the Cheyun rhymes were what were considered uh, authority were actually one yeah. um, So basically, if I were the teacher, I would say, okay, write a poem using the 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 Sean rhyme. Yeah. So that would be like uh, Sean. Yeah. And that would be okay. You, you you now that means your poem has to have lawn and spawn and Sean <laughs> in, in the rhyme position. And then I would take your poem and then I would grade it and I would have the chagrin at my elbow and I would say, wrong, wrong. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, at some point, it got to be so difficult to use the chagrin uh, rhyme categories because of phonetic change in language. At first, they said there were certain, um, like, let's say, parameters of correctness, like where, where basically, if eh, they were close rhymes, but not quite uh, right. Then they would say, okay, it counts. Yeah. And then later they said, you're allowed to bring a copy of the Cheyun in with you. Uh, and uh, then later still, I don't know what happens. And then of course uh, they ended the examination system. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so that was how you got, you know, uh, I mean, Poetry writing was not the only thing you were tested on. You were also tested on knowledge of history and whatnot. But um, being able to write poetry in uh, accordance with the categories inspired, let's say, by the Cheyun uh, is one of the ways you became a civil servant in, in pre modern China. Yeah. yeah. So it, it sort of it would be very nice if the current pronunciation was not automatically the same. Or the danger of doing it wrong. I mean, there was. Yeah. Basically, already in 602, there was a danger of doing it wrong. So, certainly by you know, 1450, there was, there was a, a grave danger of doing it wrong. And you can look at actually. Um, and how, how old is the pronunciation then? It's not, it's, it's representative. It's like, you know, just a bit before 602. No, no, you know we're not dealing with like uh, you know some Vedic tradition where they where they memorize things from Asia. Right now. It's like um, it's it just that sort you know Mr. Lu was inspired by the same thing. Your you know depending on your age, either you or your parents or your grandparents are like the kids today. They, they just don't know how to rhyme anymore. <laughs>
so I decided that's why he made this book. And then of course that became then became like to write a good poem, you have to write it like it's from 602. Yeah. Um, although actually then as you could imagine, then some people were like, no, I'm gonna break out and I'm gonna write a crazy poem with phonology from 1050. Yeah. Um, and, and then also later people also wrote you know new rhyme books to say like, okay, here's the rhyme book if you wanna like for Beijing Opera, you know, Beijing Opera has its own sort of special phonology. So there's rhyme books for Beijing Opera and stuff like that. 